No, this isn't any kind of green screen or stock footage. I'm actually here in DC, the capital of the United States. And today I want to explore this one topic that has been itching at me for as long as I can remember. But I think to address it, we have to take a few steps back a little bit. So shall we? This is Friendship Heights, a pretty well-off area at the top of the DC border. And where we're standing right now is that exact line. To my knowledge, it's one of the only cities in the world with this level of definition. And in a shape that does not organically come from the landscape surrounding it. So what's the deal with the diamond? Well, today we're gonna get to the bottom of this. The U.S. Capitol bounced around a lot between 1776 and 1790, roughly eight times. Oftentimes, Congress would just stop for a day to convene and make decisions for the young country on a whim. They became known as the Nomadic Congress, as at their coattails were the British, whose interests at the time were to put the ideas of an independent, democratic, and virtually politically partyless U.S. to rest. Did you say party less? Haven't we made a name for ourselves on both a national and international scale for having a two-party system? Back in 1776, these guys didn't even want to give parties a part in this budding political scape of the United States. How did this change? Well, it actually has to do more with the DC border design than you think. To remember, I mean, in 1776 and beforehand, the U.S. was a pretty turbulent place to be. Between the British soldiers that were interested in continuing to have the United States and its colonies be a part of the British Empire, and the U.S. who wanted to claim their independence. They had to have these different capital locations in order to avoid being attacked by the British. There was a lot of running. In 1783, when the Revolutionary War ended, they were finally able to settle down on a capital. And they decided to move the U.S. Capitol to New York City, where they had signed Washington into office and they were kind of ready to settle there. Okay, I don't know where you're getting your information from, but New York City is definitely not the capital of the United States. Hold on, she's about to explain why the capital moved from New York to DC and the reasons behind the decision-making process. Okay, so then when did it shift? One, they wanted to appease pro-slave states at the time that feared the Northern capital may favor abolitionist ideas. Two, they were trying to avoid the begrudging Continental Army vets looking for their promised pay. And three, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and Thomas Jefferson struck up a deal under the Residence Act that basically designated the capital's new permanent location in exchange for past legislation that made the federal government assume state debts accumulated by the Revolutionary War. And voila, the capital in DC was established. One of the things that I love about this city is when I'm walking around, there's just such a high level of diversity that exists here. Not just in the food and the people or even the languages you may hear, but also in the expression of all these different ideas, which I know may feel odd given the polarity of the opinions that have been shared here over the last couple of years, but it does make me wonder how they're able to maintain such an ebb and flow of ideas, even at such drastic scales. Founding fathers were a bit frustrated. They were coming from a country whose party systems were becoming more exaggerated and more polarized, and Quite frankly, they were sick of it. This was due to disputes that created civil unrest in their original home, England. Heads of state and religious ideologies were coupled together and represented by kings and people choosing sides, which then manifested itself into bloody warfare and lasted throughout the 17th century, which left a bitter sentiment towards monarchical government structures, a unified church and state, and political parties amongst the founding fathers. 
and we can see how the city tries to grapple with the current polarity U.S. democracy faces. Using barriers to protect civil offices and people from harm. Today, the feelings we have towards the situation, anger, frustration, sadness, conflict, are probably similar to those felt by George Washington and the other Founding Fathers. And as disheartened as they may have felt at the time, they had hoped that their ideas, although different, could bring about a better future. Ideas they could work together to form and ratify a constitution. Ideas that deliberately omitted the use of the word parties. And focused instead on championing life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and of course, political neutrality. Neutrality. An idea they felt so strongly about that they wanted to stamp it into physical space. A space not to exceed 10 square miles, or roughly 16 square kilometers. A place that could not only embody, but also hold this discourse. On an urbanist level, the DC border has allowed policy to shape the building heights within the border, as well as implement green building standards for non-residential construction. It does show us how policy truly impacts the way that we build our space, and how that then can impact what we do in it. Despite the political turbulence revolved around policymaking and other major events we're living through in 2023, the city remains a place where different ideas are represented next to each other on a daily basis. So we gonna keep saying her name, Shankwella Robinson. Ideas are powerful, especially when we build them into our physical spaces. Making DC a district was a way for the Founding Fathers to ensure their intentions would live on past their lifetime. It's a symbol for the importance of us to have our own opinions and still see the humans behind those that we may disagree with. To respect people in our communities, despite our differences, because as daunting as the changes around us may feel, we're all just people trying to create a better place than what we were given.